um, something with the Board of Education I want to make sure that everybody is clear on, because it is a little confusing. We have three districts and one at large. There are two candidates for each of the districts and the at-large position, of which everybody in the county gets to choose one, get, or will get to cast their ballot for one. For the Owen district, we have Mr. Chip Craig and Mr. Dan Hale. Okay, <laughs> we're looking for you. Uh, for the Robertson district, we have Steve Sizemore and Amy Churchill. For North Buncombe, we have Anne Franklin and Brian Freeland. And the county, uh, I'm sorry, in the at-large, we have Dustin Pless and Jerry Green. Okay, so again, two for each of the districts. You will get to cast a ballot for one. Now, there are three other districts. Another at-large. Chico. <laughs> and let me get this right. Chico, Jeff Cavish. Close. Close. I'm going to let them introduce themselves, so we'll get it right. <laughs> I apologize. Chico is uh, also at the at-large position. There are also three other districts, Irwin, Inca, and Reynolds. They will remain on the board, those representatives, currently, and you will choose those in two years. They will, they, they will be up for election. So uh, we, we're going to go ahead and start to my right with Amy Churchill. You get one and a half minutes each candidates to introduce yourselves. There will be a 30-second timer, okay, right in front of you. And then a red, which means finish your thought as concisely as you can so I don't have to step in. Then when we get to the questions, you'll have one minute to answer the questions. Because of the large number, there will be no rebuttal, okay? Or no uh, further expansion. All right, uh, Ms. Churchill, we'll start with you for a one and a half minute introduction, please. Thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to thank the Asheville League of Women Voters for um, having us here tonight and hosting this forum, I think it's a great opportunity for the public to get out and become um, familiar with the candidates so that they can make an informed decision. Um, my name's Amy. I'm Churchill. I live in Arden with my husband, Ben, and our daughter, Maddie. And Maddie is a sixth grader at Coombs Intermediate. Um, for several years, I've been actively involved uh, in volunteering in the classrooms and with various PTO projects within the Robertson District. Um, I've always believed that education is one of the most valuable resources that we have. Um, a, having a great education can open so many doors, uh, regardless of where one starts out in life. And it truly is the great equalizer. And the public school system's value should be immeasurable to the community it serves. Um, with that, I believe all children deserve an equal opportunity to receive a first-class public education. It should not depend on where you live or what school you attend. High academic achievement should be the standard, not the exception. And I believe we are capable of having that in all of our schools in Buncombe County. Um, and just finally, I'd like to not only be known as um, Buncombe County being known for the um, home of Bear City, USA, but I would really love to see us be home as the education first city. That's my top priority. All right, thank you. Mr. Craig. Thank you, and I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters for putting this event off and on and allowing us to, to be here today. Um, a little bit about my background. I'm an incumbent. I've been on the school board for four years. Um, my educational background, I'm a graduate of Davidson College. I uh, have an MBA from Northwestern um, in finance. Um, I have, uh, for several years, been a about six years, I was a banker. Then I went to work for North Carolina Outward Bound School, got a little bit of taste of education in a different way. And in the last 14 years, I've had my own business, um, real estate business. I have uh, two kids. I have a seventh grader and a tenth grader. We had a busy night tonight with uh, soccer for my middle school and open house at the high school for my daughter. Um, why am I running? I think all of us tonight are probably questioning that a little bit. Why are we willing to be up here? Um, but I can't think of a more important thing to do with my time than to, um, to invest it. And, and I'm always trying to do something outside of work. And I can't think of a better thing to do with my time. I also think my background with finance and business um, is very applicable. Um, and I have been involved in the school for four years, the school board. and. Um, I'm excited about what's happening and I want to continue to be involved. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Gray. Frank, you announce the district each time you introduce somebody. Uh, absolutely. Oh, in district. Is, uh, what district you are in the Robertson. Robertson district. And Mr. Craig, you are in the Owen district. Owen district. And uh, Ms. Franklin. I'm Ann Franklin. Um, I'm from the North Buncombe district. I'm, uh, uh, I've grown up here. I live in the house I grew up in. Um, so, uh, I, I am a product of Buncombe County Schools and very proud of it. I taught for the school system for 36 years, and during that time, I believe that uh, and came to practice that all children should succeed, and uh, no matter what their plight in life. I believe that education is the uh, means by which people can overcome the circumstances of their birth. And I want to be part of, I am seated on the board at this time, and I want to, uh, I'm running again to help move the county into the 21st century and to make the decisions that will help the, um, us provide that kind of education for our children. I also believe that all children need to be in the presence of a capable, caring, and competent teacher and that it is that teacher that causes the success in the classroom. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Franklin. And Ms. Franklin is for North Buncombe District. I want to remind you, if you have a question, if you need a card, just raise your hand. We'll get you a card and a pen. If you already have written your question, just hold it up and we'll collect it. Ms. Freeland. Good evening. Thank you again to the Ashley Blue voters for having us here. I am Brian Freeland. I am running for the North Buncombe District seat. I am from the Weaverville area. I have been here since 1982, and my son goes to the Weaverville Elementary School. He is a second grader, and uh, my wife and I li have lived here in the Asheville area, or the Weaverville area, since we've been married, and I personally have been, again, a product of the North Buncombe District School System. Graduated in North Buncombe in 86, and after that, my career started in the military. Retired military of 20 years, three active duty tours uh, overseas with the present uh, wars that are going on. I have recently left the Asheville Police Department after 17 years of service, and now I continue my work in retail um, for various reasons. I currently serve on the Weaverville PTO Board. I'm the Vice President for the Elementary School. I've been on the board for three years, and my son is what drew me to the board and the school system. Um, I thoroughly enjoy it. Again, it was asked just a minute ago, why are we doing this? It's for the kids, number one. We have to make sure our kids are raised in the right environment, to have the right education, and to be able to graduate and be able to serve in a capacity that we may eventually see them be the next chairman of the commissioners or, or whatever. we we got to have them for their education. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Green? Again, I also thank the League of Women Voters. My name is Jerry Green. I have my wife with me in the back as my best supporter and biggest supporter. I began teaching at Emma in 1967. I taught at Johnston School, assistant principal at Swannanoa Elementary School and retired in July after 34 years as principal at Black Mountain Primary School. Now you're saying, why are you running for school board? Because I've been in school all my life, and that's what God's called me to be a part of. And if you want to know what kind of job I'll do, go to Black Mountain and check with the folks where I've been. I think there's three things you do on the school board. Number one, every decision you make, you put children and students first. Number two, you hire and employ the smartest people you can find, hold them accountable, and stay out of the way and let them teach and operate the system. Number three, I think you carefully analyze the financial resources to be sure they're following the students to the classroom. I would like to serve on the board, and I'm working at the large seat. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Green. Mr. Hale? All right. Sorry about that, Mr. Green. I am Dan Hale. I'm running for the Owen District. Um, I was encouraged by friends and teachers, parents, at uh, Black Mountain Primary School to go ahead and run for the Board of Education. Uh, Jerry Green was the principal for my children. I have two kids over there. And I only have a high school education, but I'm very passionate and emotional about what, I wanted, what I've set out to do to run for the board. 
Um, my two girls in the school system, I'm very proud of them. I want to see them go far. I'd like to be involved. I, I'm involved with the school through the PTO. My wife is a president of the PTO now. And I, and I enjoy going to the schools and seeing the teachers interact with the kids. I think it's sad to watch um, the, the teachers bit struggle. <clears throat> they struggle a bit not having everything they need to uh, accomplish what they need to on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it's very challenging. I think with our budget, with the school system, I'd like to be more involved and see what I can do to help the system get better. And that's what I want to do. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Hale, I'm going to try this again. Mr. James Gavich. All right. And then I'm going to run for the at-large seat. At large. One and a half minutes. Yes. Um, I'd like to say thank you as well for everybody here, as well as uh, all my colleagues that are running for positions. I think it's great. It's a great turnout and it's very exciting. Um, I have lived in Buncombe County for working on seven years. Uh, my children have been educated in the public um, school system since <laughs> kindergarten. I have a sixth grader at uh, Coons Intermediate and a fourth grader at Avery Creek Elementary School. Um, I'm a big supporter of public education. I taught for eight years uh, prior to my current uh, profession. Uh, most of that time was spent overseas working for the Department of Defense. I taught a lot of dependent schools, uh, at dependent schools for our military personnel. I also taught for a year here at uh, Buncombe Community School in the Owen District. One thing that I've, or two things I should say that I always found that, that I've kind of developed in my, my feelings for education is that students are our most important customers. That's what they are. And we're here as educators and as community and as parents and in government to support those children, those customers, and give them the greatest service possible. I think teachers are our greatest assets to accomplish that. And they're professionals. And, and I don't, and I think that they should be continue to be treated that way. Um, to accomplish that, the whole goal of our education system should be developing a workforce. And I've heard that a lot with the government officials that were here today. And I think we are getting into a global economy. And everything we do needs to make sure that they're prepared for that economy. Thank you, sir. Mr. Pless? Yes, <clears throat> I'm Dusty Pless. I've lived here in Buckham County my entire life. I'm a product of Buckham County Schools. I attended Western Carolina University where I got a BS degree in special education. I have an MA degree in public school administration. Uh, growing up, my parents were always involved in, in the school system. Um, my dad ran unsuccessfully one time from the school board. I ran in 2000 from the school board. Uh, I was a part, well, let me back up. I, uh, at Estes Elementary, I served as vice, uh, pre uh, vice uh, president of the uh, PTA and on the advisory council. At uh, Valley Springs uh, Middle School, I served as vice president of the PTA and served on that advisory council. When I got to T.C. Robertson, I served on their advisory council. Back in the early, or the, back in the 80s and 90s, Buckland County Schools were deemed to be one of the 12 worst systems for facilities in the entire United States. We passed I think it was three bond referendums to bring uh, our facilities up to date, which I was, I was not on the board, but I participated with. And in uh, 2000, I was encouraged to run for the school board. Uh, my main purpose is to put children first, and I want to do that uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, I've been proud of the boards I've served on. I am the, I'm not the oldest one on the board, which Franklin reminded me of that, but I'm the, I've been the longest serving on the board, and by, uh, <laughs> Doing so, uh, we've had all kinds of, uh, uh, we've had good boards since Hi, 2000. Mr. Pless, thank you very much. Time is up. Mr. Sizemore? Thank you very much, James. Uh, thank you to uh, the League of Women Voters. I think if there's, uh, if there's accolades to go around, but there's certainly enough of them going to the League of Women Voters. Thank you all very much for hosting this forum. Thank you. I'm Steve Sizemore. Uh, I'm the Robertson representative on the Board of Education at, uh, currently, and I'm seeking uh, re-election uh, to that seat. <clears throat> I've served on the Board of Education since 2006. I was appointed to fill an unexpired term, so I filled half a term, uh, ran in 2008, was elected, uh, and now I'm on the ballot again for re-election. Um, I think that uh, it's important, people can talk a lot about what they 
uh, plan to do, but I think that uh, one of the things that it's important for our voters is to understand who a person is and where they came from, and, uh, and <coughs> it's very important to me, and I want to make sure that people understand. Uh, I'm, I'm actually a, a, not only a product of Bonham uh, County Schools, I actually grew up in the schools, and when I say that I literally grew up in the schools because my parents were both teachers. So I was at school before most people were at school because the teachers always arrive early, uh, and I was one of the last people to leave. Um, and uh, my wife and, and uh, I both graduated from Robertson District Schools. My uh, oldest daughter has uh, graduated and is from Robertson, uh, and my twins will hopefully graduate uh, this May. And uh, uh, that, that involvement in the schools, the community involvement, is uh, something that I think is very important. I uh, uh, think that that's uh, an integral part of the decision making that uh, we have as board members. Thank you, Mr. Sizemore. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, we'll begin with the questions. Not everybody needs to answer every one. Uh, some are directed specifically to candidates, and we will address it to you. However, others will invite to join in if you want to participate and answer that. If you don't choose to answer, don't, but just signal to me that you do want to answer a question, and we will make sure to, to get you in time allowing. Now, you will have one minute to respond to these questions. We'll start with one. Uh, I'm going to kind of combine these. Uh, prior to deciding to run for the school board, obviously for existing school board, current school board members, this may not be appropriate. How many board meetings have you attended and how are you involved in the school system? We're going to tie that in with this. What do you feel is the most important role of the Board of Education and how does that role impact students' education and instruction? Anyone want to start with that? I'll respond to that if it's okay. You certainly may because I was going to have to put somebody on the spot if it was. <laughs> Mr. Green. I've attended school board meetings since 1967. I've probably attended more school board meetings than these folks up here that are on the board. <laughs> I have noticed at times it lasts to one o'clock in the morning. Now they're lasting longer too. Let me tell you what I uh, view some of this when you tie it together. If you're transparent and folks know what you're talking about and questions are answered, and when questions are asked, you try to answer them. If you don't know, you go to find out. If you do that, the public understands what's going on. And that's the main reason for that. Mr. Uh, I've only attended about five meetings and that's part of what's motivated me to get involved with the school. I think that the Board of Education should be a, they should have a good conversation in two-way street. And I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing a real breakdown in the Board of Education. And I don't see how they can get anything done and say good policy when they're fighting all the time. So I feel like I want to be a part of it and see if I can help them move along a little bit better. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Anyone else here too? I will start with Mr. Gregory and Mr. Churchill. I'll just answer one, one part of that question, which is what the role of the board is. And I believe it's the highest uh, superintendent. Um, that's the most important job we do. And then we oversee the overall policy. Um, we approve the budget. Um, but I think it's important not to get too involved in the day-to-day -day activities of the, of the hiring of teachers. Um, I think it's important, as Mr. Green said earlier, that we hire a good superintendent. We have a good leadership team. The principals um, uh, hire the folks and we let them do their job and we hold them accountable if they don't. Ms. Churchill? Um, yes, I, I have um, actually attended board meetings on and off for the past three years and um, more frequently in this past year. Um, and I really think that one of the main things that the school board um, should be doing is be good stewards of the money that um, has been allocated for our school system. Um, we all know that there's been budget cuts over the years, and it doesn't look like we're going to be getting a money tree anytime soon, so I think we just really need to step back and, and take a look at the resources that we have and, and how best to use them. Um, and then I also think communication should be something that the board strives for. When I say communication, I mean between administration, teachers, parents, and even students. I think that it is a two-way street, and um, the opportunity to engage in conversation would be very beneficial for the board and the community. Thank you. We'll go with that. I'm going to call you Chico, Chico. if that's okay. <laughs> Chico, and I apologize. 
Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, I can't say that I've actually ever attended a board meeting in this county. Um, one of the things is I've just not been aware of what, when they've occurred and, and what kind of um, role that it plays in our education. And that's always concerned me, which is why I'm getting involved at this point. Like uh, Ms. Churchill said, uh, I think one very important role of the, uh, the Board of Education is to get as much of the community involved. I think we have a lot of manufacturing, we have a lot of other industries here, and I think if we work with those individuals in our community, community uh, we can help develop students that are ready to slide into that workforce and be active members of our, of our citizenship. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Segner. Thank you. Um, it's interesting because from a very broad perspective, uh, the, the, the individuals that serve on the board are served to represent the community. Um, and, and I think that sometimes we get caught up in what the details of the job are involved that, that we forget that, or, or at times people forget that. But we are elected to represent the interests of the community. And, and one of the reasons that I indicated who I was and, and, uh, and, and what happened to me as I grew up so that, that you people would understand. I can tell you that I make, uh, I'm, I'm gonna make a certain decision on a certain point in a certain way, but until you understand all the aspects of why uh, and, and the background that the person has, you need to, that, that's, the, that's the person that you're making the decision to elect. Um, from a communication standpoint, we, we are representatives of the community in that we are talking to people in the community to find out what's going on. They come to us, we go to them. The same thing is true at the school level. Advisory councils, PTOs, PTAs, uh, and the uh, communication with the uh, teachers and the students in the classroom. All right, Mr. Sizemore, thank, thank you. you. Mr. Kless? Um, I probably haven't attended as many, well, I know I haven't attended as many uh, <laughs> board meetings as uh, Jerry Green, but however, uh, even before I got on the board, I was very active. I was very active and very involved. And the, you know, our job is again to hire a superintendent to make sure that we have very, very, very competent people from top to bottom. Let them run the system and be the eyes and ears to the, for the community. All right, thank you. Next question: How much input does or should the school board have, or should or are decisions made by the paid administration? How much input does or should the school board really have? Or are decisions made or should they be made by the paid administration? I want to uh, remind you if you have a question to please raise your hand and we'll get you an index card and a pen. Or if you have a question already written out, just hold it up and we'll pick it up. Mr. Sizemore. Thank you, Jerry. Um, Several of the members of, the, of this panel have already indicated that the Board of Education hires a superintendent. We do not run the daily operations of the school system. That, that, is, that is allocated to the superintendent, and, and, and uh, the decisions from that point are made uh, at, by the superintendent. We develop policy. We establish a policy that's adopted uh, that provides and facilitates for the efficient operation of the school system. Um, and it provides the framework for the superintendent to make uh, his or her decisions. Um, that is the way that the school system operates, that's the way it's supposed to operate. It is not intended to be micromanaged by the Board of Education. <coughs> it's not, that is an inefficient means of uh, operating a school system. Anybody else here? Mr. Green? May I respond a little bit to that too? Did you know Buncombe County has 25,600 plus students, nearly 4,000 employees. Uh, buses, 291 of them that run 16,000 plus miles a day. Now, when you turn that loose as a board, a board needs to know what's going on and hold the people accountable that does that based on budget issues they deal with. When you look at the budget, may I speak to the budget just a minute? Uh, I believe about 60% of it comes from the state, 15% of it from the federal, 25% of it from the local. When you look at that money and how to do it, you must allow somebody else to do it, but you need the information to go by because we make decisions based on that. Thank you, sir. Mr. Dale? I don't think we can operate this uh, school system without a board. I don't think you can have the ship just go and askew. Um, you have to have some directive. Uh, you know, for you know, for instance, uh, I don't. If the community doesn't know that the school board is pushing through to build a STEM school on a, a t possible toxic waste site, um, 
and not willing to talk about it, the public needs to know these things. Um, now, there's things you can do, like test. It's real simple. And I wouldn't want my kids to go to school a, in, a, in a building that could possibly be contaminated. Uh, I, I think that there has to be the Board of Education to help direct the administration. And I think the administration's doing a really good job with what they're working with, too. Mr. Hale, thank you. Um, well, as far as how much input the school board should have in the day-to-day -day operations, um, I'm going to kind of put it in an aspect that I'm used to. I'm in health care, um, and I take care of patients, and I certainly would want somebody to come in and, and who doesn't have any experience in health care and try to tell me how to do my job. But I would rely on, say, the family members to provide additional input and um, you know, be willing to listen to them because I think when you involve um, a group of interested individuals, you get a better outcome. Uh, it's a team approach. Thank you, Ms. I believe that, um, as it has been said, that the board is to make policy and to hire people that are capable of doing the job and leaving them alone and letting them do their job. However, um, as a board member, um, th there is a fine dance that goes on between the board and the administration. I believe that board members are um, eyes and ears for the administration. And that by being able to uh, provide information from the community to the administration, that better decisions are made. However, those decisions are made by the administration, not by the board. Uh, thank you, Chairman. That's great. Yeah, this may come up in a different question, but I just wanted to respond to the environmental issue that came up. We are testing. We tested a couple months ago or a month ago um, one of the wells closest to the school, and it came up um, no detection of hazardous material. We're drilling another well, um, and we're going to test that. And I'm all for testing. I don't think anybody here would want to not test, so I don't know where that's coming from. Thank you, Mr. Craig. All right, next question. Would you consider asking the state legislature to allow the Article 39 sales tax, now this statistic has not been fact-checked by me, but it says about $12 million per year, now designated for school construction in Buncombe to be spent on teachers and students and the classroom? Ms. Churchill. Um, absolutely. I, I think what we need to do is look at our money as a whole, and sometimes you do that, you know, we all do that at home with our budgets. We only have a certain amount of money to um, use. And if we're needing um, a new roof, then maybe we don't go to Starbucks every day. Um, so I guess if we need the new buildings and upgrades to our existing buildings, then yes, money should be allocated to that. But we certainly cannot forget that while we have new buildings, we do need to provide the teachers and textbooks and um, all the other supplies to make that not just a building but an actual school. Mr. Rachel, we have a few over here. We'll start with Mr. Pless. Um, yep. To your original question about the sales tax. Yes, sir. Yes, I would. However, you've got to keep in mind it's just like your house. You have to keep your house when your house is when you're living in a house. You have to keep it up. So you have to to make sure that your facilities are, 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 are well uh, planned for. Um, um, I lost my whole train of thought. That goes with each other. <laughs> come back to you. Come, come, come back to you. Seconds if need be. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Mr. Green. May I respond to that, too? North Carolina spends in Buncombe County about $7,600 a year to educate a child. The state is about $8,200, and the national average is about $10,600. Buncombe County is the 85th. We're 85th in the, uh, out of 115 school systems of spending money for education, yet we're the 11th largest tax system. So the question that occurs to me is why would we spend $7,400 in Buncombe County, but the state average being $8,200? Well, be some way that money could be adjusted somewhere to follow the student to the classroom. All right, Mr. Pless, we'll come back to you for 30 more seconds. Okay, um, 
I guess, I guess my point was, um, and all the existing the sitting board members know this, along with Mr. Green, a board of education has at most, at most, ten percent discretion over the budget. Otherwise, the federal government, and the state, tell us what to do with the money. Anybody else care to address that? Mr. Sizemore? Uh, briefly, I, I, one of the things that, uh, that Mr. Green has indicated was that uh, we were 85th in um, expenditures. That's uh, the, the number, 85th is right, but we're 85th in the state in funding from the state. That's uh, not necessarily state expenditure. That's how much the state invests in Buckingham County. But we are the 11th largest school system in the state. Um, this microphone doesn't like it. Um, it Get what closer the, to it. Get closer. Okay. All right. I was thinking I need to push it away. Thank you very yeah, much. Close. One of the things from the, with, with regard to Article 39 that's very important to understand is that that was legislation that was put in place to provide Buncombe County with uh, uh, supplemental funds for building construction. In the event that that is changed in its funding stream, that, that legislation is likely to go away. That will then cost Buncombe County money as opposed to benefiting the students of Buncombe County. One of the things that we need to recognize is the Buncombe County Board of Education's motto is at the back of the building or the back of the room and every decision we make is to um, make that decision in the best interest of those students and Mr. taking Sizemore. away that Article 39 money would not be in the best Thank interest you, of those students. Thank you. Would anybody else care to respond? All right, moving on. Do you support merit pay for the superintendent? If so, why? And if not, why not? Any thinkers? Yeah, we'll start with Mr. Green and then we'll go to Chico. If you have very pay for the superintendent, why would you not have it for the other 4,000 employees? Now, I've worked in a system where that operates. That is difficult, believe it or not, to do because of the uh, submitted variables. It's like you get a classroom with 20 kids. It's hard to determine uh, what you're doing with that 20 kids. Now, when you set it up with a superintendent, the superintendent gets it. That means, like I understood today, Buncombe County is probably about third in the state with testing. Now, where the praise should go for that is not to the superintendent. That should go to the teachers and the ones in the classroom doing the work. Uh, thank you, Mr. Green. And uh, Chico? Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with uh, Mr. Green. My biggest concern with merit pay is just how is that defined um, at a superintendent level, and then how does that trickle down and actually affect what happens in the classroom? Again, teachers are the most important assets in this county when we talk about education. And when we talk about merit pay, that's where we should see the, you know, where the benefit occurs. Uh, again, how is that defined and what is it, does it involve teaching to a test so that a superintendent can, you know, hit those merits? I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't think it's a uh, successful way to run an education. All right, Mr. Sizemore, please. I'm not in favor of merit pay for the superintendent. I'm not in favor of merit pay for the teachers, but I will tell you this, there is a merit pay system in essence. The Board of Education hires the superintendent, sets the superintendent's salary of an instruction that's established by the state school board uh, in the legislature. And so we are a merit pay system to the extent that we're watching what the superintendent does and work with the making sure that he or she works within his guidelines uh, or her guidelines. One of the things that um, uh, has been uh, indicated is that when the school system is successful, when the students, for example, what Jerry just indicated is that uh, we, we now know that our students in Buncombe County again scored at the uh, third highest level for uh, SAT takers in the state of North Carolina for any schools that have at least two uh, high schools in their school system. Certainly, that goes. The praise for that goes to the uh, teachers. It also goes to the students that took those tests, the parents that uh, provided the support for them, the superintendent that established the structure for those teachers to have uh, opportunity in the schools to provide the teaching uh, skills that were necessary, and the board of education that established the policies that allowed that to happen. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sizemore. All right. Next question: uh, Workforce and job training has been mentioned. How does that compare and what can you do about the value of education itself, college prep and critical thinking skills? I just, one of the, one of the things that I, as I mentioned, I, I was overseas while I was working for the Department of Defense and teaching American uh, students, um, but I was able to see other models that, it, that occur in, around the world. 
and, and one of the things was, you know, the assumption is that if you're going to prepare students, you have to prepare them for a college education. Um, frankly, as an educator in the classroom, that's not where every child is eventually going to, to succeed. <laughs> And so what we need to do is offer something that will prepare those children and those students for success in our communities. Whether that is going into college or whether that is going into a vocation is essential. And you know, like I said, there are models out there that I think uh, we as a country, not just within this county, but certainly we, we can begin here, can look at and learn from and, and not necessarily compare and say, geez, we don't succeed like them. What are we doing wrong? Well, let's look at what they are doing to succeed and use that instead. Thank you. Um, I, yeah, I mean, we're moving towards a global economy. We're in a global economy. And I think the school board is, I mean, the school systems are doing some good things. It's hard. I've been impressed because in the last four years, the budgets have been cut, and yet we're, we're striving to do little things incrementally to make us more global. Um, we have such things as the, um, we just, we're one of 14 schools in the system that are part of um, the North, North Carolina Global School System. Um, we have a second year, we have a, we're running a Spanish immersion program at Glen Arden, 30 seconds. Um, we are doing Project Lead the Way, which is a STEM project um, in middle school, and we're looking at doing a new STEM high school. Um, we're, we're going to compete, our, our workforce has to compete globally, and I believe even in a time of recession, we're striving to accomplish that. I can't wait to have money and actually do some things, some more things. All right, last question. Uh, again, Ms. Churchill, give you. Well, I was just going to say, um, as far as locally, I think what we should do is involve businesses um, within the community to um, offer mentors in the schools. Um, and when I say businesses, I mean, that could be anything from a plumbing business um, to doctor's office. Uh, but just giving the kids an opportunity to see what um, areas they'd like to maybe invest in, investigate further. Um, you know, Asheville is just home to so many different um, You know, there's, there's just so many different um, jobs that we have out here in this area, and I, I just think that it would be worth our time to get the community more involved in educating those children on um, what, what they want to do when they're done. All right, last question. Uh, it, is it true Buncombe County Schools does not have a line item budget? Why not? And should that be changed? <laughs> Any takers? Well, I was just going to say, um, you know, not being part of that process, um, I, I can't say with authority on, on how the budget is done. But I will say that however the budget is done, it certainly should be looked at, um, and like I said before, to see where we can save money and shift the money to the areas that need it the most. It shouldn't be so black and white that you can't pull money from here to cover this expenditure. We, we just need to be able to look through and, and do like any budget and determine what things can be moved around and just put our heads together on it. Ms. Franklin? Um, the, the public, Buncombe County Schools, as any school district in the state, is given a budget and money comes from um, Raleigh in specified places. And we do not have, nor does any other school system have, the ability to move money around. You get money that comes and it comes to pay teachers. You get money that comes to us and it goes to pay um, teacher assistants. And so, unlike your home budget where you can move things around, you can't do that uh, so much in the school system. I'd have to really question, you know, uh, I, I have heard that there was a uh, insurance renewal policy that went up over 30 percent and there were no competing bids when asked, the board was asked were there any competing bids. No, they went through with it. Um, 
whether that was done lawfully or not. I would say it was done lawfully. I, I feel like there's no common sense there. If you know that your insurance policy is going to go up 30%, wouldn't you want to question that, even in your own personal life? Or are you going to accept a salesman's uh, word that that's a good deal, let's go with it? Uh, would it have been easy enough for the board to say, let's get a few competing bids? And really, if the budget's going to keep continue to get cut, education always gets cut. Don't we need to be smarter with the money that we have? And if we're able to shift some around, I, can't, I cannot believe that we can't find some dollars and shift it around where it's needed in the classroom to take care of the kids. And Mr. Sizemore. Thank you. Um, you know, we hear on occasion um, from a few people that there is no line out of budget. And quite frankly, it's just not accurate. Um, we've, got, we've got reams and reams of paper. It, it's really, it, it's, it's almost obscene the amount of paper that it takes to produce the budget and, uh, and produce that for Buncombe County to be able to see where the expenditures are. We have uh, breakdowns on those expenditures for each individual that is paid, uh, for each department, for each type of expenditure. I'm not sure what more of a line item you could ask for than the than what uh, Ms. Parker, who receives accolades throughout the state um, for the work as the finance officer for Buckingham County, um, could produce for us and for the for the public. Uh, than is already being produced. That information is presented at a budget workshop. It's presented during uh, budget meetings. We have um, any amendments are done uh, at, at uh, regular public meetings, and the uh, budget is available uh, in its multiple formats on the uh, website for the Buckingham Board of Education. Mr. Sadler, thank you. Thank you. Do we have others who want? Okay, well, this is the last question, but go ahead, Mr. Craig. I'm sorry to keep going. <laughs> I've got a few closing comments. You're okay. All right. <laughs> Um, I just want to echo what Steve said. I mean, it's so frustrating to read in the paper and see that we don't, people saying we don't have a line item budget when we do. We approved a budget, or we were presented a line item budget for this year, 2012 2013, in January. It's on the website. Go and look at it. It's broken down per person, it's by code, and it's there. Um, that's all. Okay. Hey, Mr. Green? In relation to the budget, I think there's about 60,000 plus items in it. Now, when it's that thick, my question I would occur was, uh, occurred to me was, who looks at it? <clears throat> and my opinion is, it ought to be looked at because 85% of the budget that comes into Buncombe County is used for personnel. It's about the only way you can save money is personnel programs and purchases. So what it would require, and I have done this over the years, sit down and go through the pages of it and look, and find out who's paid what. I think you have to do that, and you have to look at each item like that. It is line item, but it requires close looking. Mr. Plus? Uh, can you hear? Okay. Um, like I, I'd like to reiterate again, you have, the, the current board has about 8 to 10%, you know, of uh, discretion in, in, what, in what the budget is. And our, our chief financial officer, Mary Parker, is the envy of the state. You've got the best financial officer, bar none, in the, running Buncombe County Schools of any system in North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Bless. Well, I hope you all are encouraged by uh, the information you've heard here. I hope you've had some of your questions answered. These are the forms where you can do that.